Well, I'm here today at the Ohio History Connection with Becky Odom, a curator here, and we're going to learn a little bit about Cincinnati-based artist Charlie Harper. So, we've got a painting right here. Now, tell me, this is a painting? It's a lithograph? What? It's, so, it's actually a lithograph, okay. which is a type of print. All right. So, it's based on an original painting, but what a lithograph is, is a print made from a plate that is drawn on by the artist. Oh. So, Harper would draw with a grease crayon on a metal plate and then apply oil-based ink, which would adhere to the grease crayon, oh my gosh. but not to the other parts of the plate. And he was a very skilled lithographer, so he could actually print multiple colors at the same time. Wow, so is this typical of his style, this kind of abstract nature? It is, so he called this minimal realism. His goal was to capture the essence of his subject in as few brush strokes as possible. Oh, I kind of like that. So how do you think he developed his style? So his style came from several different places. So he was born on a farm in Frenchton, West Virginia, and so grew up sketching the areas on the farm. So lots of wildlife and right. animals and farmland, things like that. And, uh, and so that influenced his love of nature. And then his style was influenced actually by his World War II service. Oh, really? He was drafted, and the Army trained him as, um, in map making and drafting and sent him over in 1944 to France, and he was an advanced scout with a reconnaissance unit. Uh, the story goes that uh, there was a kind uh, chaplain attached to his unit who carried his art supplies with him You're because kidding. he wasn't able to carry them with himself. Right. Um, and so he would sketch the scenes that he saw in France, uh, and also he would do portraits of uh, his fellow soldiers for them to send home to their mothers and wives. So he credits his World War II service with forcing him to really figure out what the essence of a scene was that he was trying to capture because he had to work very, very quickly to capture it before he had to move on and continue his army service. Of course, that makes sense. So was most of his work this type of print, or did he, he also worked in advertising, that kind of thing? He did, so he got his start as a commercial artist, that's how he made a paycheck. So this particular piece he actually did on commission for uh, this book, Ohio's Natural Heritage, oh. which was published in 1979 by the uh, Ohio Academy of Art, mm -hmm. uh, which is based right here in Columbus. And so you could see right. that you have the wood duck on the front cover, and the baby beaver on the back cover. And when you look really closely at it, you realize that it's actually two views of the same scene. Here we're underwater looking at the baby beaver who's swimming underneath yes. the duck. You can see his head and his feet here. And underneath the duck, oh. you can see just a little bit beaver tail. of the tail. That's so cool. I didn't realize that at first, but once you say it, you kind mm -hmm. of can't unsee it. And the circles, the concentric circles around it are a bit like a target. So uh, both the wood duck and the uh, beaver were errat nearly eradicated mm -hmm. from Ohio. Actually, the beaver was uh, extinct in the state of Ohio, but their numbers bounced back due to the hard work of lots of uh, very devoted naturalists. Sure. So they thought that these were appropriate animals to use on the cover of a book that celebrates Ohio's natural yeah, heritage. Yeah, that's so great. What mm -hmm. an interesting backstory. I think the circles also just kind of look like the rings in the water, too. Right, like as like, if the duck is swimming, it yeah. gives it some movement to it. And that's his artwork amazing. does have a lot of movement to it. It's not stagnant, it's not right. stale. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Well, thank you so much for telling us about him. Oh, you're welcome.